Hello everyone and welcome to Don't Be Bored. Today I'm doing another designer interview. Today it's with Sam, the designer of Button Kingdoms. This is a bribery based deck building game where you get stuffed animal armies. So let's jump into this interview. Say hi to Sam, please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about the game. Hey Oliver, thank you for having me on. I absolutely love the show. I'm Sam Barmettler. I'm a designer and also I run Around the Stump Games LLC, so I'm a designer and self-publisher. Um, I've got two games that I've designed, the first one being Outrun the Bear and Button Kingdoms, which should be coming out in 2025. Uh, Button Kingdoms, as you mentioned, is a bribery-based deck builder with a stuffed animal uh, fantasy theme. It's really designed to be a very social deck builder, to try to overcome that difficulty of the multiplayer solitary problem that so many deck builders end up having. It sounds cool from the very start and straight away I have to ask you about that theme. It's it's really unique. Whenabouts in the sort of development process did that come about? Was it there from the very start? Well, the theme didn't come with the initial aspects of the game. The first idea was for a very social deck builder, um, so it ended up being mechanics first. Now the way that I was engaging with that, it meant players were going to be paying each other um, resources in order to be acquiring the cards to have that very social aspect, which meant my initial theme ended up being uh, very generic fantasy. Uh, the, uh, the game was initially called Merc Kingdoms, so the idea was that if players were paying to the kingdom that the mercs were from and then getting the mercs to be able to help them. But because I had already designed Hour and the Bear and I had started my publishing company around the Stump Games and I knew that I wanted to self-publish, I realized that a generic fantasy theme like that wasn't really going to be the fit that I wanted for my publishing company. I wanted to have something that was very family-centric. This meant I had a really big challenge in front of me. It was really difficult for me to settle on the right theme for two reasons. One, I needed something to be family friendly, but two, the good mechanics of deck builders always require for you to have some cards that destroy other cards. In Merc Kingdoms, it made sense for those to be beasts like dragons and wyverns. They eat the soldiers that you had had, had bought. It wasn't until I had the idea that my dog destroys stuffed animals all the time that I came up with the idea of doing button kingdoms, using stuffed animals as the units of your armies, having kids struggling for power with each other in a fun game, following a, a simple game that me and my siblings used to play, using our stuffed animals to, to war with each other. And then those units that destroy other units, well, those being pets dressed up like mythical beasts, just made a lot of sense. So that's how I came up with button kingdoms. Drawing from real life to create and craft a stuffed animal fantasy world, that's a really cool way of doing things. And it's a deck building game, and that's a genre that's really exploded in popularity recently. What sort of games from the genre have you uh, drawn inspiration from, and how have you made Button Kingdoms stand out from them? Oh, there are so many great deck builders. It's one of my favorite mechanics to engage with. Um, the deck builder that I probably plays the most and took a lot of inspiration from is Star Realms. Um, that game has a very streamlined battle system in it, and that's where I really have a lot of fun with deck builders. Um, but as I was working on Button Kingdoms, I realized I needed to branch out in my deck building focus with my gameplay. So I ended up buying and learning Dominion. It had a lot of core concepts that really helped me get better ideas for how the cards should interact with each other. And then also another one that helped me with the idea of integrating theme into the game was probably the Clank series. Now, as to how I make my game stand out from those other deck builders, it really comes down to the market. Most deck builders, you end up with a multiplayer solitaire experience where you buy a card and then you add that to your deck and then nothing really matters until your turn comes around except for if somebody else buys the card that you wanted to buy and then you have kind of a negative experience. I wanted to do something very different. 
So what I did was I had the cards have zero set cost. Instead, the other players at the table are setting the cost, and you're going to have to pay them victory points in order for you to get the card. This makes it so you have a cooperative deal where two people always benefit from every deal in the game, the buyer and the seller. Of course, as the buyer, you're going to turn around that and use that card to bash it into the seller, so you also have a bit of tension there. And really, the only person who ever feels left out on a deal was the person who didn't participate. It resulted in a lot of great player in interaction that just permeates throughout the entire experience. Changing that market that's so sort of core to a deck building experience, that's definitely a good way to stand out from the rest. And sort of drive some of the interaction you're looking for. Now, your previous game, Outrun the Bear, it won the 2023 Best Family Game People's Choice Award at the UK Games Expo. Now, that's pretty damn awesome. So congrats to, uh, to you for that. Um, but what did you learn from the, sort of that game and development design experience that helped you in this one? First of all, Winning that award was a true honor. I really didn't think I was going to win, um, to, to be nominated in the first place. That was my first game. Just receiving the nomination was really big for me. When I was there at UKGE, I assumed Next Station London was probably going to win the People's Choice Award like it won the Judges' Choice Award. So I actually spent the time of the award ceremony teaching other people how to play the game who were sitting down at the table. When I found out after the show that I had won, I couldn't believe it. It was such a great experience, and I feel truly honored that the attendees of UKGE liked my game enough in order to be able to vote for it and give it that, and that honor. I think the biggest thing that I probably learned was how to play test better. Uh, with Outrun the Bear, there were definitely times where I had play testers tell me things that I didn't agree with. And because I didn't agree with it, I found that later on, once the game was published, well, other people didn't really agree with me. So I think I probably could have made even an even better game if I had listened to my playtesters better and collected that experience. Still creating the experience that I want to have with the game that I make, but creating an experience that everyone really enjoys. So I think that's really what I've learned the most um, in, since I've been designing, is how to properly listen and collect feedback and make the necessary changes for people to have the best game possible. That's really nicely honest of you and talking about playtesting. Do you have any great memories from playtesting this game? With the Button Kingdom playtest, there's probably two really big ones for me. The first was the play te the actual very first playtest. Um, I decided to take a little bit of a risk. There is a live stream playtest channel that I engage with called uh, Portland Gamecraft. They do a uh, playtest this series. Um, so I decided to take my brand new idea onto that series because they want to focus on how to be better playtesters. And they hadn't had a game that was never playtested before on there. That playtest was a really fun experience. The game worked, which is amazing for a first playtest. But also, it's because typically I spend a long time milling over a design before I actually table it. Um, I saw that I had a lot of good ideas that I wanted to go with, but also there were really big changes that needed to be. It, that during that playtest, it was a chaotic dexterity game that I had not actually intended. The second great experience I had was at uh, Gamma Expo 2024. I was doing a playtest. We had four players. I was one of the players in there. And during this playtest, two players had formed an alliance. And me and uh, a fellow industry member, Wes Todd, had started to form our own alliance. Now, we got to a point during that game where it was very clear that this other lions was going to do a ton of damage to West. Now, I had the opportunity to do damage to West first. So it resulted in an experience where I was trying to convince West that the best thing for our alliance possible was for me to attack him in order to ensure that they didn't get resources out of it. I didn't end up attacking him in the end, 
But once we went through that discussion, I realized that we, I had the player interaction that I wanted. That it was a very interactive experience, and it was an experience that could make memories. And that's what's important about games. It really does sound like you've managed to nail the interaction that you were striving for, and that's always a great thing, when you can sort of say, yes, that's what I was aiming for, and you've done it. Now, where can people go to find out a little bit more about the game? So you can look us up on buttonkingdoms.com. Um, you can sign up for our mail list, so you'll get a notification about when the Kickstarter is going live, if you go there. Um, if you want to see a lot of the art from the game, look on Instagram. OutrunTheBearGame.com is where we post all of our games for Around the Stump Games. And then also, I've got a TTS mod up and available for anyone to play. It is fully illustrated with the rulebook in there. I only ask that if you play it on TTS that you please leave me some feedback if you see anything that can be improved. Having the game available so people can try it, that's really cool. So maybe if you are listening, watching, uh, and you've enjoyed what you've heard, maybe you want to go and dabble with it, you actually do have that chance. That's pretty cool. And, well, let's end the interview with a fun one. What game has the best component in it? You're really going to make me choose this. It's, uh... So I've got one that's very close to my heart. Um, because it was in my first game. That's the giant bear in Outrun the Bear that chases you down the track. Now, that's my own design though. So as far as other designs that are out there, component quality, I gotta give it to Chip Theory. Everything they do is absolutely amazing. I picked my first factory to work with because of the fantastic work they did on Cloudspire. As far as really cool components, the one that catches my eye the most when I'm walking through a convention would have to be the tower in uh, Return to the Dark Tower. I've never actually played the game, but that tower looks absolutely phenomenal. Um, as far as what really is cool on the table that's fun to play with, I really do like the Everdale tree, even though you gotta take it apart in order to put the game back. The Everdell tree getting some love? You normally hear about those cool, cute resin resources in Everdell, not normally about the tree, so that's nice that you've sort of gone for something a little bit different. And, well, thanks to Sam for coming on, answering these questions, and the links that he mentioned uh, are going to be in the description box downstairs, so go and check them out. You can even, like I said, go and check the game out if you like what you, you hear. You can give it a go, test it. That's a really cool thing. And well, until next time, go out and check out other news reviews and interviews and stuff on the channel here. And thanks for watching.